I will be uh, uh, illustrating what I'm talking about uh, using, using the app that was on screen. Um, and we'll get back to it in a while. Uh, so my topic, uh, Python observability with open telemetry. Um, just introducing uh, what open tele telemetry is and showing where it fits in and how to start using it. So um, the, for a quick overview of the whole talk, um, concretely, we are talking about uh, two things, telemetry and observability. Telemetry is stuff that gets sent from um, like uh, to a remote location. Um, you're measuring something from a distance, telemetry. Um, so those are pieces of information sent out from software that you, or services that you're running somewhere. Um, the reason why you're sending stuff over the, over, uh, over the network is um, you want to achieve observability. You're sending telemetry so that you can see what's going on. You want to have an observable system. You want to be able to see what's going on inside the system, and you want to be able to query, query, query it, uh, investigate it. Um, the traditional types of telemetry that people are mostly familiar with are things like logs and metrics and traces. Um, logs just being unstru unstructured text that you're um, writing to a file locally, maybe. Metrics being things that you count, uh, traces being um, uh, pieces of, of information that belong together but that um, come from different um, execution points um, in, 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 in your code um, or in your services. Um, all of these things are really just events. There are things that happen at some point in time and that is uh, uh, sent over a network to a backend. Um, the other thing, the, my other purpose with this talk is I just want to demo an, a few things that I think are like super cool and everybody should use it. Um, two of them um, that I'll call out as Gitpod, which we'll see during the demo, um, and Honeycomb, which is a backend observability system. Um, and I have to say in advance, this is a whistle-stop tour. Um, I'm not going to go into the deep intricacies of observability. I'm just going to show how easy it is to make the first step. Um, and I want to show that what I'm, what, what I, I want, I want to um, show that this is not like a dead end. It's not a toy. Um, it's the first step on a path that can take you as far as you need to go. Okay. So. Uh, uh, I'll talk about the, a bit about the evolution of telemetry and observability, um, which is basically the reason for the Open Telemetry um, uh, project to exist. So, in the most primitive sense, um, uh, we just have logs on a file system that um, can be just lines written to a text file, can be print statements uh, printed to the console um, for uh, individual dev to see what's going on in their code. Um, you might have a bunch of different services all writing to their own log files. Um, you might be writing to a, 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 a syslog where, um, where logs from various different services are getting um, mixed up. Um, but um, you're, you're, uh, it, it's only helping you on, on, on one system. You still have a lot of disparate things to to, to look at that sort of the most, um, it's not very queryable, you can grip in a text file, but it's, it's, uh, it's the most primitive kind of, of um, observability, I would say. Then, um, when you get to a more uh, real world situation, um, you don't, you, you're not looking at logs on your, on your machine anymore, you have many different servers up in the cloud, um, running different kinds of things, um, and you want to see, uh, you want to understand what's happening in all of them. So then you might be sending your logs to some, um, you're ship, shipping um, your logs to some central place where you can look at them. Um, in this case, I've got uh, arrows with a couple of different um, colors. So that means that one of those services are sending to, uh, sending uh, telemetry of some specific type to some specific backend. So it could be, for example, um, I've ex instrumented my code with a Datadog SDK, and I'm sending um, uh, 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 traces to Datadog. And the other one is colored in orange. Um, so maybe that one is instrumented with Sentry um, SDK sending to Sentry, or to, or, to, or to Grafana, maybe. 
um, and to make use of that, um, the developer um, is switching between different, different, uh, di different dashboards, different services, logging in here, doing a query here, switching to another one, doing a query over there. Um, at what stage is, uh, uh, is, is everyone here? How many people are in, are in this um, uh, stage that I've just described? Yeah. At least a few are, are uh, honest enough to admit it, but I think <laughs> I would be surprised if it's not more. And um, uh, we're, we're definitely mostly in that, in that situation. Um, and where you really want to get to is um, where um, you have your uh, many different service, uh, services up in the cloud there. Um, you have a user uh, using it, say for, say, for example, walking up to a web page, requesting a web page. Um, and that request triggering work in a set of related services, jumping, execution jumping from one service to another. You want to be able to gather that um, in uh, one place where you can uh, process it and control where it goes. Um, and you want to be able to look at it in your uh, observability backend of choice. You don't want that choice to be made for you um, at the time of development. You want to be able to change your mind as, as needed. Um, and that's, that's where the Open Telemetry project really uh, came from. Um, uh, all the, the uh, main players in um, the, the uh, logging um, telemetry space realized that um, it's, really, uh, it, uh, it's really hard to um, get people on board a certain system. They're scared of lock-in. If you're in one system um, and you want to uh, add another one, it requires re-instrumenting all, all your code. Um, it's just uh, too much lock-in, too much inertia, too fragile. Um, even if you want to um, evolve, uh, like for example, uh, uh, move from pure logging to tracing or to distributed tracing, um, it's hard to get everybody to update their code um, to incorporate the improvements that you want to, that you want to have. Uh, so um, a number of big players, including Google and Facebook and Lightstep, um, came together and designed uh, uh, architecture for telemetry called open telemetry. Um, so uh, what I'm um, uh, what I'm showing here really is um, you have your user kicking off processing across a bunch of different services. Those services are calling each other. They are sending telemetry um, uh, to a collector. And you can see in the little cloud thing there, I've got two little collectors up there. So they're sending to a first tier of collectors um, that can be uh, uh, um, uh, batching and, and, and sampling uh, telemetry and then sending it on to another one. Um, now, though, you see we've got uh, red and green, yellow and blue services there. And in the trace showing next to the collector there, we've got a part of the trace is the red bit, and a part of it is the blue bit, and a part of it is the yellow bit. So I'm collecting telemetry from all these different services, and I'm putting it together into one trace so I can see the part that each of those services contributed uh, to that request, um, and then shipping it to the backend of choice. Um, now. Open Telemetry um, is a cloud native computing foundation project, and it's the second most active one after Kubernetes. Um, and I mean, I think everyone is aware of the impact of Kubernetes in the in the um, cloud deployment world. Um, Open Telemetry is not a, a, a very old project, but it has grown uh, massively. Um, it has it has uh, accomplished massive adoption. Um, and most of the components of open telemetry are coming into general availability or are already there. Um, it, it differs depending on um, specific uh, languages or frameworks, but um, by and large, it's, it's, it's uh, quite usable already. Okay. So that is a quick um, rundown on what open telemetry is. Um, on where it's coming from and why it's worth, worth paying attention to. Uh, now I'm uh, um, just going to uh, start looking at how you can deploy it and what it looks like um, if you're doing it in a, in a Python context. So the simplest way is like going back to the evolution of observability is you just have instrument your code and you send the telemetry directly to the backend that you want to use. Um, then 
if you want to make it a little bit more sophisticated, you introduce a collector in the middle. And that allows you to um, uh, uh, work on those uh, signals before they get to the telemetry backend. And you can um, send to more than one backend, or you can uh, augment your, your um, events, uh, you can sample, and so on. Um, the um, way that this is um, uh, structured within OpenTelemetry is OpenTelemetry defines a, a protocol, um, OpenTelemetry, oh, that should be OTLP, sorry, OpenTelemetry protocol. Um, you can send tr uh, telemetry via GPRC, HTTPS, um, uh, and the collector has receivers for um, this protocol and for um, any other um, protocol that is contributed. So it can also uh, receive traces uh, from um, existing other uh, instrumentation that uh, uh, don't form part of the project. And then on the collector, you have processors. You can, for example, um, uh, add information to traces coming through. I'll uh, talk a bit more about that in the next slide. Uh, and then you've got exporters. Um, uh, again, the default protocol is the open telemetry protocol, but um, you can um, have exporters for um, many different um, uh, 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 observability backends. And on the backend, that's where, the, the, where um, users would, could be developers, could be people in support, could be product people, um, are visualizing and querying the telemetry that you get. This is more of a, uh, a complicated real world type of scenario what you, that you might get to. Um, we've got a couple of different services. One of them is running a collector sidecar locally with that application. Mm -hmm. That means that you can be sampling and anonymizing batching traces before they ever um, leave the local um, network. Um, so if you want to avoid eating up bandwidth costs or if you're really sensitive about the information getting sent. Uh, you've got a couple of other apps. The one is already instrumented with Datadog. It's just sending Datadog telemetry the way it always did. The other one sending New Relic telemetry the way it did. The one with a collector as a sidecar, that one can be sending open telemetry protocol. There's no need for it to be sending in a, in a legacy format that's already, that's already dealt with in the collector. Um, in the first case, those two services are sending to a, a cluster of collectors. And you can load balance across them. You can scale that out as, as, as you need. Um, and um, the second one, um, I'm saying that, okay, besides the main telemetry backend, we also want to send some stuff to Splunk. Um, so the, the, the second and the third um, uh, services are sending to Splunk as a backend. The, fir the first two are both sending to a different tele telemetry backend. So um, this is to illustrate um, it. Um, they've, they've, they've thought of... Um, uh, 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 any kind of real-world scenario that, that you might have, have to deal with at larger scale. Okay, so <laughs> now we're moving to the demo. Um, for the demo, um, I uh, picked a Flask as a, as a, for a demo app. Um, on the right there, you can see open telemetry instrumentation that is available for other Python web frameworks. Um, that's just a, a sample. The list goes goes on, um, and there are similar um, projects for uh, Java, Go, um, uh, uh, basically every um, uh, major ecosystem. Um. Okay, this is the demo app that I'm using, um, and uh, let's see here. Okay, this is the GitHub repo um, where the code lives. Um, and here, uh, if I prefix this URL, I can't do it now because it's, it's too dim for me to see, but if I prefix the GitHub URL with gitpod.io slash hash and hit return, that'll open that repo in a, a, a transient development environment on the cloud. You can all do that and you'll have your own copy of it running on your machines. Oh, not on your machines, you'll have uh, Visual Studio code in the browser running on your machine, but communicating with a live development environment in the cloud. Um, so here's ours running, um, and there you can see the, the, the traces, um, or the, basically the, 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 the logs line, log lines from the Flask app. 
as you guys are guessing, playing the guessing game. Um, and this is what the game looks like. Uh, Okay. Uh, it looks like it's being a bit slow, probably because it's running a development server and I've got a whole room full of people hitting it. That's okay. Um, I'll give away the first answer. <laughs> Did you not get it? <laughs> um, Okay, wait, no, I don't want to get there yet. Uh, back here, okay, right, so that's Gitpod. Okay, so um, how do we instrument that simple Flask app to send telemetry? What we need to do is in requirements.txt, we add three lines. The open telemetry distro that you're going to do for any um, uh, um, Python um, uh, app that you want to instrument. Um, then the exporter, I want to use the OTLP exporter um, because I'm starting from scratch. There's no need for me to uh, like uh, use a Datadog SDK or whatever. I can just use OTLP. Uh, and then finally, I'm importing the instrumentation for Flask. So that will auto-instrument um, uh, the Flask framework and start sending uh, telemetry. Then in the code itself, um, I need to um, import the instrumenter and uh, wrap our app in the instrumenter. So in Flask, first you instantiate your app instance, and um, I'm, uh, I'm using this QR code um, uh, uh, module to um, basically give me the ability to show the URL as a QR code that you've all seen. And then also I'm uh, calling the Flask instrumenter on the app object. And we're done. That's it. Now we're sending telemetry. Um, we'll look at the live telemetry in a bit, but I'm going to hold off on that for a second. Um, okay, so to do that, um, here's our flask run command. So normally we just say flask run. In this case, we're running it under control of the open telemetry instrument um, agent. And here we are telling it the exporter is OTLP. Um, uh, I'm, we're we're um, uh, giving it a, 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 a API token for Honeycomb because I'm sending directly to the Honeycomb observability backend. Uh, and here I'm identifying that backend. So I'm basically telling it, just send it straight to the, to the backend. Um, and that starts showing traces like this. This is a screenshot of Honeycombs. And this is a trace. Um, and as you see there, um, it's uh, tracing very generic functionality. Um, it's basically just the standard rendering pipeline of a, uh, of a Flask app, just showing certain templates rendering. Um, that already gives you an, already an idea what's going on, um, but uh, it won't give you insight into the guessing game, the riddle game. It, um, there's no specific instrumentation for that yet. Um, okay, so now we're going to step it up a bit and introduce the collector component. Um, and at the same time, I'm also going to introduce some more instrumentation to the code. Um, so as, as far as requirements on the Flask side is concerned, there's no difference. Um, in terms of the code, um, I'm, the, 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 uh, I'm introducing some more telemetry. So I'm instantiating a tracer. Um, because of the, because um, it's already instrumented with Flask, I'm going to have a trace available. So I can just call trace get tracer, and it'll find the active trace. And I'll use, use this uh, tracer later to add spans. Then to um, send uh, uh, metrics, I get the metrics provider, and I instantiate a good guess counter and a bad guess counter. And later in my code, I will be uh, incrementing those counters. Um, OK, so in the code, um, I introduce in, in instrumentation like this. In this case, I've got a, a write to file function. It, um, just writes to file. This guessing game, it doesn't have a database. It literally writes your guesses to the file system. Um, and here, I just add a context manager with tracer start as current span, and then I name my span, write to file. Um, and I leave this code as is. So what, 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 what would the point of that be? What, what, would, what would you say? What do we get out of that bit of instrumentation? Right, exactly. So doing that, it'll, it'll give us the timing for that, for that bit of code. 
the next one here, um, we are creating a different span, uh, app riddle. Um, and here I'm adding an attribute. Um, just uh, uh, tell me how many how many riddles there are Wh upon upon app startup. How many riddles are you reading? It'll log that. Um, here I'm adding some more things. Um, I'm adding a username uh, uh, attribute so I know who's guessing. And here, if it's a correct guess, adding the incrementing the good guess counter, incrementing the bad guess counter. And I can go on like that. Basically, uh, that's up to the developer. Um, they know what's important about their app. If they're wondering about something, you just add um, spans and attri attributes to the spans. Then to um, uh, I, I change the way that I run this Flask app. In this case, the main change is I'm not sending to the backend directly anymore. I'm sending to a collector. In this case, I'm running the collector locally, so just localized. Um, then. To run the collector, um, I pull a Docker image, and I run it. Um, there's, uh, that's it. It's a, it's a, it's a Go. The, the collector is a, is a Go um, component. It's uh, super easy to get running. Um, Docker is one way to do it. There's various other deployment methods as well. Uh, I pass a local environment variable with a token. Um, I pass um, the collector uh, config. Um, I will have a look at that YAML file in a moment, and that gets mounted into the Docker container, and I open a few ports so that my Flask app can send um, to, the, to, the, to the collector. Uh, okay, so now, now we're looking at the collector configuration. Uh, this is the receivers, the local receivers, and here's the exporters. We're just exporting to one. It's Honeycomb, as before. Um, and in the service part here, we enumerate, we're sending, we're receiving via OTLP and we're exporting via OTLP in the exporter section. Um, okay, that's it for uh, introducing the collector. Now I'm going to uh, introduce a second backend. I'm going to be sending telemetry to two different backends. So the changes here is I just add a new backend to the exporter section. So here, um, uh, I identify the export here, it's logs, logs IO, and I pass a different uh, API token, and that's it. Um, that, oh, and then I need to name that exporter, so I just add this logs IO. So now I'm sending to two backends, that's as easy as that. Uh, the exporter I got from a different set of contributed modules. Like with the instrumentation, we saw a whole lot of different Python modules instrumented um, or uh, available for auto instrumentation. Similarly, there are tens of different exporters for different services. I just picked one called logs.io. Um, and now you will be getting in uh, instrumentation in two, different, in two different places. So this is a screenshot of Honeycomb. This is a screenshot of, of, of logs.io. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yes. Now let's uh, switch back to this. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, um, and let's start querying. So, oh wait, let's make it a bit bigger. Uh, where am I? There. And here you can, this is, this is what we've been doing. This is, our, this is uh, you guys, you've been querying. Um, and we can change the visualization to a uh, heat map. Uh, heat map duration, milliseconds. Is that this one? Uh, yeah, okay. And run that. Um, now we can start um, exploring what's going on here. Um, so this is a heat map on um, the duration that it takes. And the first thing that you'll notice here is um, everything is down along the bottom uh, down along the bottom axis, but there's a bunch of suspicious things up here. Why are these things so slow? What, what's going on there? What's, what's in, uh, different about them? So that I can, and um, this is something um, Honeycomb specifically does. Um, I can investigate via bubble up. So what bubble up will do is um, uh, it will give me um, the difference between um, the baseline, so everything I didn't select, and the things that I did select. Uh, 
No. Oh, and what I really want to see here is okay. So sorry, this is a uh, I'm I'm missing a trick here, but basically, um, one of the things that I'm oh sorry, one of the things that I'm uh, logging is username. Um, mm, uh, uh, sorry, this bit of uh, this this bit of the of the demo is a bit of a fail. So I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but in the um, in the code here, oh, come on. Um, if there's a, a O in the username, we sleep. So people with an O in the username get a slow response. Um, and if I've if I've got it set up correctly, then then you'll see the the O usernames coming up here with a with a, a tall bar, um, and it'll make it easy disco easily discoverable. Um, um, it'll give you a qu a quickly. But yeah, sorry, I missed I missed I missed setting that up somehow. Anyway, this is the Honeycomb observability backend. This is uh, this is logs.io. Um, Logs.io is a uh, SaaS service packaging together. Um, here you can uh, packaging together a bunch of open source um, uh, uh, observability tools. Like this one is Jaeger. So Jaeger is something that you could be running yourself as well locally, or you can use the, pa the packaged one. And here you can see the slow traces as well. There's the faster ones down there. Um, so that would help you, for example, if you're transitioning from one logging platform to another one. And to uh, just to close, um, these are the things that I've been featuring. Gitbot is your uh, cloud development environment, so open telemetry. Um, just if you're, if you're doing telemetry at all, just use it. Don't even think about it. Um, if, you, if you're not using it yet, um, put a collector in there and start sending to the collector instead of directly. Um, Honeycomb, um, they've got a 20 million uh, event a month um, uh, free tier. Uh, they've got really nice um, uh, uh, visualizations and, and, and querying. Um, they, uh, they're, actually, they're actually the ones who um, uh, coined the term observability in its modern sense that the rest of the industry is kind of getting behind now. Uh, Logs.io. I picked this one just because um, it uh, uh, demonst demonstrates using um, well-known open-source components for the telemetry. Uh, Flask, of course, and then I wrote this entire uh, um, presentation at Arcadia, just down the road, one kilometer at Prakanong, and I'm going to go there after the conference. So anyone uh, who would like to join me for a drink is welcome. Uh, and let's see if there's anyone on the on the high score table. Um, who's, who, who's, who's, are, are these, are these, uh, who, who's Mike? Hey, okay. <laughs> so I'll buy you a drink. I'll buy the top three people a drink at Arcadia after the conference. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. It's a specification and implementation. Um, uh, so, for example, the OTLP protocol, there's a reference implementation of that, but anyone is free to go and create their own implementation. Um, also, there's a core open telemetry project, but then there's contrib projects um, uh, for um, third parties um, to extend it, and the extension mechanisms are very well defined. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot, guys.